light of things to look at here. First of all, mats on the floor as you enter. So key thing, that means mat, when we say that, means there's two different tiles on the floor. And in this case, there's a border tile and then a detailed tile. Then we come through here, and this is uh, a beautiful hardwood. Uh, it's kind of like a dark cinnamon color, like a cognac. So we are seeing a return to some of those warmer colors because gray can be kind of difficult if everything is gray. It's hard to live in. A um, little bit of contrast here in terms of our wall color um, is, is deeper than what we've seen before. Um, and we have the impact of wallpaper on this wall, which is darker again, to highlight that this is really our feature wall. The other thing that I like about having wallpaper is when people come by and they touch the wall, it's actually very helpful because it, it preserves the wall. Um, especially vinyls, which it sounds awful, but vinyl is actually a very nice wallpaper today. It's not what it used to be. Come into this very formal room. And this is for people who love to entertain, but really love it to be uh, super elegant. I don't know if you noticed, but my voice, uh, the sound changes in here. And that's a big factor because of a full size carpet. So when you're trying to connect two spaces, like a living room and dining room, instead of doing two carpets or one with and one without, do one larger one. And that's exactly what we've done here. Even though this room, um, it really does multiple functions. There is so much great seating and different details in here. Starting with a little nook here, a nice comfortable after dinner seating area is how I would look at this. So this would get used as your main dining, you know, you're entertaining, the table gets larger, it can turn, so you can turn it this way, kind of a nice detail for the table. Then you have extra side chairs with arms, our full cushion chairs, and then we have the after dinner area key difference here which i think is really interesting is we've added a large bench to the table it's kind of different it's adding a banquette to make a table a little bit more comfortable and it really sort of frames up the space nicely we are seeing um, dining rooms and eating areas really change in terms of how people use them now so they have a bit more of a casualness even though they're used in more formal occasions not necessarily day to day Another wonderful thing that we absolutely love adding where we can is trim details. And you know, these may cost up front, but boy, they have a lot of value in the long run. So this is wainscoting. So wainscoting, we usually term as what goes around your waist, essentially. Um, and you'll notice that this has a really deep detail here. And then we have um, the trim work here and then the recess panel. And inside that recess panel is another piece of molding. And you'll notice there's just a little gap. Um, it's called a bead is left behind. Just It's a shadow line that just makes it a little bit more traditional. And that's what we're looking for here, are more traditional elements that make it stand out. Now, if you're gonna do this, you wanna make sure though that you add something called back band to your trim. So back band is a type of casing um, or a type of piece of casing that gets added to your regular casing makes it thicker and also allows us to project forward so we have something to run into. So these are some of those little teeny design details that you never thought to look for, but now that I've pointed them out, you're gonna walk around to everyone's house and be like, hey, is that back band? It's a really nice feature. You wanna to try to add it in where you can. Um, okay, standing in this wonderful hallway here um, in the Pelican House at Lindvest, and if you look up, way up, you'll notice there's actually um, a lovely arched ceiling above me. Um, the architect, uh, Mike Suriano, great architect, actually suggested a square box here. And we said, why don't we try something a little bit different? So we did a curved one. Um, so they typically would call this a barrel vault or a barrel hallway. So just a different option that just creates a bit of softness. And in this case, Kentari has treated it, um, designer who is lovely, who works with me. She treated it in a wallpaper just to give it a little bit of a softer feel.
couple areas here that we can go. We're going to head into the kitchen, but first, because it's behind me, is the office space. And Guntari did this, and I love what she did here, in that she paneled the whole thing, then painted everything the same color. So instead of breaking up the crown or the trim into different colors that we typically see, she's wrapped the color right up to the ceiling, and then she's wallpapered the ceiling, which is a really fun youthful look and although it still has traditional elements you can see how changing the way you treat those traditional elements gives it a more modern or contemporary feel. Here, um, we have these double doors here and then you have great office space which of course the double-sided fireplace um, it's, a, it's a very very nice room it gives you really great options here. is a little wine nook. So in this case, what we did, you can see all our wine bottles here. Um, I'd like to call this research where we had to get a lot of wine bottles. Anyway, um, key thing here is this could be any kind of storage um, in terms of wine or pantry or whatever you want. Um, in this case, we didn't need a pantry because we have one with a kitchen and we wanted to have some kind of wine closet or display that was available. And to brighten up this area, we made this mirror and this is actually all etched onto it um, to give it a really great detail. So when you're in the living dining room, you can look here, you can see this, and you can see into the kitchen. And in fact, mirrors have a history in dining in that they were used quite frequently so that the owner of the house could see what was going on in the kitchen. Perhaps not for the best of intent, but none, nevertheless, there is a history there. Okay, so now we're in the best part of the house of all, I think, and that is the kitchen and the family room. So this kitchen works very well. Kitchen is Oakdale, countertops are Caesar Stone, table is Bernhardt, um, sun pan for the chairs. It's the reason I'm telling you that is to let you know that in today's world of design, we try to source as much as we can from Canada and from local vendors. And that's really important to us. Now, that doesn't always mean we can, but that's what we try to do. In this case, you'll notice that the kitchen is a U-shape, so we have all the major appliances stacked on this wall behind me. And we even put in a nice uh, coffee maker, it's very great for entertaining. Nice elements here are great storage. This is uh, sort of counter storage, be what we call appliance storage. Then you have great storage like cabinets like this that come right down to the counter so it's a little bit easier to get in and out. And when you're my height, I'm not particularly tall, this is very helpful because I don't have to reach up so much. And the reality is for counter use, I'm really working here, here to the fridge or to the sink and to the fridge. So I don't necessarily need as much counter space here, so I'm not working here as much. My prep is really gonna happen here, which is why we put in a second prep sink. And this frees you up to add in a uh, recycling garbage, which is on one side, and then you can have your organic garbage under the sink if you want. Cooktop, very nice. Drawers that are separated. Now, it's controversial, I will admit, um, instead of one big pot drawer, but my feeling is if you can separate your pots out a little bit, um, the lid and the pot together, you're more likely to keep them organized as opposed to piling them on top of each other where you're trying to pull out another one and moving everything over. So that was our theory on doing it this way to give it a shot and see if it worked better. You can decide if you like that idea. We have our stacked, um, basically steam oven or wall oven, wall oven, whatever combo that you want. In this case, um, we did a, a mix of both. So you have all means of cooking when you want to cook. And what I like here is we have the pantry behind. The dishwasher is still in progress right here. Um, so this is a servery, which could be a little bar fridge if you wanted. Um, kind of like the idea of having a second dishwasher if you use this area here as what we call a morning kitchen. So this might be where you keep your blender, your Vitamix, because you're making your smoothies in the morning. Um, maybe you keep the toaster in here, and that's why we added the dishwasher, so it gave you another option. Um, but totally up to how you want to do it. 
pantry, which has become very important over the last few months, um, so that we can store lots. It's always been important, but this gives you a really great option. And, you know, however you want to design this space, I kind of feel like this whole area is very personal to what you need. So for me, I'd want the toaster here. I'd want a little mini bar fridge. I'd want my smoothie machine here. And then some version of closed cabinet here to keep all my munchies and an extra paraphernalia for the kitchen. So you design this area to match what your lifestyle is. Then I don't have to worry so much about the big kitchen. See where I'm going with this? Okay, let's go over to the family room. Oh, beautiful tile floor. Looky, looky, look. in the family room and in this particular model, the Pelican model, um, it basically comes with this style of ceiling that's above which is a built-in waffle done with drywall. We've added in the crown molding and then we've painted that crown molding a more dramatic color. Obviously you don't have to do that. We wanted to showcase some of the features that are available in this house and for us we love the idea of the two-sided fireplace. We added the mantle to it that was sort of it had elements of traditional but a clean version so what we like to call here transitional. We added a darker wallpaper to the wall to help highlight other features in here like the crown molding um, in the ceiling and tie into the crown molding and then all the casing and baseboard. Other key elements here that we love from a design point of view is I love full drapes. To me, they just warm up a room. And in the summertime, it's not such an issue here. But in the wintertime, that's when you want to close your drapes and get a sense of warmth. So that's why we added elements like that here. So we just feel it's really important. This sofa here is called the Jasper. This is, we just love this sofa. This is made by a Canadian company um, called Gresham House that works with designers and architects. And it's probably hard to tell, but this sofa is actually eight feet long. Uh, most sofas actually are, are sort of six feet and change, seven feet and change. This guy's eight feet. And what makes it so lovely, as you can see, it has three pillows on the back. It's a mix of feather. And it's so nice because it's big and comfy and deep. It's 40 inches deep. So again, the average sofa is about 36 to 38. So it's extra deep. But in a room like this, the reality is people do not sit with their feet on the floor. They curl up and they're all cozy. So that's why we love this sofa. It's a cozy sofa. Two chairs here, just direct your attention to. These are called the Diller. And what's so nice about them, they're made by a company called Silva. And again, another great Canadian family uh, that makes furniture here. And they're swivel. And once you get into a swivel chair, you won't get out. I can tell you that. You think you will, you don't think you'll like it, but there's something just very nursing-like when you sit in it and you slowly rock. So we added these in. I feel these are a great addition to um, any kind of kitchen that's adjacent to the family room. Because now I can turn, look at the fire, I can turn in and talk here, or I can turn and talk into the kitchen. So any kind of swivel is great when you, especially if you layer your furniture so your back ends up being to the kitchen. A swivel chair may be a good solution because it allows you to really turn and talk to people. Hello. <laughs> okay, are you ready to see the upstairs now? 